move to the next session, Insight Factories of the Future, how data from Industry 4.0 will build the factories of the future. Gone are the days of factory floor supervisors, maintenance schedules, production bottlenecks, and sacrosanct layouts. With decentralized decision making provided, uh, powered by data analytics from IoT, advances in manufacturing technology, uh, the traditional factory is changing. Find out the potential of Industry 4.0 to increase production efficiencies and ramp up industrial growth, thereby transforming the economy. The session is led by Atushito Umaru from Japan. He is the chief of innovation promotion at Hiroshima Prefectural Government. He has the mission of transforming Hiroshima's economy through innovation and lead startups of advanced initiatives such as manufacturing digital innovation programs at Hiroshima University, AI, IoT experimentation platforms, Hiroshima Sandbox, and Innovation Hub Hiroshima Camps. Welcome, Atashito. Uh, thank you. Uh, as in my introduction, I flew in from Japan last night, and I was giving this topic, and I thought, uh, what should I talk about? I do have transforming manufacturing in Japan, I mean in Hiroshima as a mission. And I also wanted to make this talk relevant to you. And I had two options I could give. I could talk of a like, oh, this is the factory of future. This is everything is automated. Everything you, you use big data and AI and it's so wonderful. I, I, I could do that, but uh, in reality, it really doesn't happen that much. I mean, in Hiroshima, if you ask like how many factories are like that, I, I can count maybe like two, there are two factories like that. And we have like a million, I mean, I will know, million, thousands of factories that are not like that. And I would like to talk more into maybe why that's not occurring. And I would try to uh, look into how it may occur in the future. So I will change my title and Inside Factories of Future, but very slowly for the small and medium enterprises in uh, Japan. Uh, but this, when I talk with like, even like in Germany or the US, people do seem to have the same problem. So I thought this would be a more of a relevant topic for you. So I, I often talk with like manufacturers, more of like big size, medium size, small size, but for the smaller size, I mean, in small size, I think the definition small is very different. I would say like a company that has employees about like 50 or 100, I would consider that a fairly a smaller company. Uh, I, I, I often ask to them, why, why don't you do IoT, why don't you do these things, you know, this is, you know about IoT, you should do this. I, and uh, I often get a same answer to it, and I, 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 say, I say, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I know IoT is wonderful, uh, I just don't know. I mean, like, I don't know why, I, I mean, that this is like a very common answer I get from uh, like the CEOs of small manufacturers, like people in the factories, they say, okay, yeah, I, IoT is on the newspaper every day, but I really don't know how I should do this. I, I, I ask again, like, what, what does I don't know mean? I mean, like, I don't know is like, it's a very simple answer, but it, it has a very deep meaning that really shows how IoT why, what's the obstacle to it? Why, why are you saying I don't know? And why am I hearing I don't know so much? So there's probably two meanings in I don't know about IoT, I don't know what to do. So number one is, well, okay, I don't know about, I know about manufacturing this and this, I know about manufacturing and selling this and this, but I don't know about IoT or information technology and precisely the technology about surrounding uh, this industry 4.0 thing. I, that's one meaning to it. Another meaning to it is, I, I think it's a good thing, but I don't know how it benefits my own company, my own factory, my own production line. I don't know how it fits into it. 
Like I hear of like so many examples of, oh, this company implemented this and their productivity went up like, like 100%. Okay, that company is that company. My company is my company. My production line is my production line. I don't know if it works or not. This probably is the two meanings that is inside the word I don't know. So when I look as a government person, I, when I try to persuade uh, the manufacturers to go into this IoT or Industry 4.0, uh, I, tr I try to think of like which are the targets that I should focus on. Uh, there are examples I can give to um, each sector and I think the most, like, most of the use cases you see on internet, on media is this top one. You, you re just restructure everything which matches IoT, it matches information technology, it optimizes itself, it's a wonderful factory. I, I have one example, one interesting example, maybe I'll talk a little bit about it. It's uh, Dasai, it's a rice wine brewery, uh, which is next to Hiroshima, and they, they are a very small family-owned uh, brewery, and one day their um, staff ran away, and so their staff has the knowledge of how to make rice wine, and it's a very complicated process you have to control everything by uh, humidity and temperature. And they, they were forced to use AI and they completely rebuilt their brewery. Their bank was generous and they completely they have an AI managed rice wine uh, generating machine. And they now have been, became a, f a huge brewery now and they are exporting their rice wine now. That is a very, very rare case, but if you look at the whole pyramid of like all the manufacturers in the world, it's a very rare case. It does happen. It is very fancy, sexy example. Probably that is most of what is told about in the industry 4.0 world. If I look at the bottom of the oops, pyramid, uh, there are companies who are starting like buying small sensors, measuring temperature, me measuring like people going in and out. And you can do that for a fairly uh, affordable price in a factory. And that happens a lot. And that is, uh, that, ha that will, I think, spread out because more sensors are more cheaper. In the middle field, uh, there's an untapped, I believe there's an untapped field that if, by even though you, if you still keep the facilities, you still keep the factories, there are room for IoT or infrastructure or in Industry 4.0 to come in. And as a policy, we kind of target this area because this is where SM, most of the SMEs are in manufacturing and this is where not many things have been done yet. I just give you like one example of like a manufacturing process in, and, and I will tell you why it's difficult to implement in uh, like information technology. Let's say that uh, there's, you input 100 A's and you change that into 20 B's and you add five C's and it will become 50 D's. That, that's like a, that's just, just a typical manufacturing process in like one factory. And you implement some amazing technology. Okay, let's say this AI recognition technology, it helps you uh, remove like the chances of uh, the production line to stop. So if this AI technology int introduced, the production line would work like more hours. So you can produce more of the Bs from the same As. And what happens is that it is, in the factory line, one process, even if the one process is optimized, there are still other factors you have to look at. Let's say, okay, you produce 25 Bs and, and what happens to the C? Okay, I, I can't put like 25 Bs and Cs in the same process. I have to put it back and 
go, go back and I had to decrease A and many things happen in the factory that really prevents the optimization of the entire process. It really doesn't, a lot of cases, the partial optimization doesn't really help with the last output or improving the total cost. So many cases, uh, I would like to give some cases we, ha we have been working on and it's very basic cases, very simple cases that IoT had some effect and it had return on investments. Uh, I would give t a c an example of two companies. Uh, one company is uh, it's called Tokyo Electric Industry and they make uh, uh, emergency power generators and they are a company of like 170 employees. So it's a fairly medium size in terms of Japanese manufacturing. Uh, and they said, uh, it was in 2016, and they said, oh, okay, we want to do IoT. Uh, and we want to, uh, we want to, imp we, we are, our business is doing good, but we want to do something. And uh, we talked with many IT vendors and, and look at the manufacturing process. And uh, it's a very, we were very surprised to find out that uh, this paper kept all the data by paper. Everything, the design, the orders, and the uh, accounting system. Uh, we were very surprised to see that. And we found out that oh, it's not the manufacturing process. It's, it's just the workflow. The paper is causing all the confusion. It is causing a mess. And maybe putting paper into data could solve these things. And it, one good thing about this is that uh, we worked as a public organization with this company, so they have uh, agreed to open their uh, return on investments. So they invested about uh, 4 million US dollars, just like uh, dozens of tablets and a simple software. And, and their cost in terms of personnel was about uh, 1.5 US dollars. So they can collect their investment in about three years. So that's a fairly good investment for a manufacturer. If you're going, because they usually take like 10, 20 years to collect, usually collect their investment. So even for a manufacturer like this side, there are so many obstacles, so many bottlenecks, so many areas you can tap into that is probably quite unimaginable for if you look from an IT vendor side. And this took time to figure it out. I mean, they don't, they said they want to do IoT. We <laughs> didn't think of like introducing tablets was like a solution. But this really happens a lot. Where is the bottleneck? And you find it, uh, maybe it's not a very difficult bottleneck. Uh, this is a more of a larger case. Uh, Mura is a, they make boilers. And boilers are, um, it's not a, you know, a very fast growing industry or, uh, but, but they were very successful in growing their market share, basically because of IoT, even though they are a fairly small company, a few hundred employees, I guess. And uh, they, what they do is, it's very simple. They, instead of like selling just boilers, they attach the sensor to it and they are, when they, there's something wrong in the sensor data and they would automatically go to the customer and they would fix it. And they, this, they sell, they succeeded in s increasing their shares by changing their business model. Uh, manufacturing, just manufacturing to manufacturing plus service. So I just summarize my uh, presentation. So for like a smaller and medium-sized manufacturers, uh, probably there are two processes before we talk about like completely automizing the entire process. Probably what they should start with is that where is the bottleneck? How do you solve the bottleneck of your manufacturing process? Where is it? And often you find it in a place that's not in the production line itself. It could be something next to it, or it could be something that's behind the production line. And there are, 
there are ca uh, several cases that you can think, think of is fairly cost effective and easy for the investment to be returned very quickly. And then there's the next process. How do you change your manufacturer, just making the A and selling it to B? How do you make it into a service provider? Just not just as a manufacturing. How do you collect the data? How do you provide the maintenance? How do you add the profit to just selling your manufacturing product? So this is my summary. And at last, we, uh, Hiroshima Prefecture had an agreement with NASCOM last October, so that's why I'm here. Uh, if you are interested in the Japanese market or in Hiroshima, uh, please contact NASCOM or with me. I will be around after this presentation. Thank you very much. If you could just hold on for a minute. So thank you, Adashito, for that uh, great session. Uh, we will just hand over a momento from NASCOM.